Good evening, Teenage Human. I'm Josh Shipp. This is a man who is very, very angry on the album cover. Look at that anger. Welcome to the glorious, still, weirdly, untitled advice show. This is episode number eight. It's episode number eight. Today's glorious, embarrassing childhood photo comes in from Stephanie. Check her out here. She's dressed up like a like a crime fighting dog or something. It's like that uh, McGruff dude, right? So uh, if you would like to email in your glorious, embarrassing childhood photo, scan it in, email it to josh at heyjosh.com. I'll put you in that frame. Stick them up. Shall we? Dear Josh, last Friday I got my learner's permit. My dad has only given me one driving lesson and we can't be civil with each other. In May of this year, I completed a state certified driver's education course at my school and passed. <laughs> Apparently, my dad and our state of New York don't agree on what right and wrong driving is. During one of our driving lessons, he insisted that I drive below 20 miles per hour when the speed limit is 30. For the first half hour, he wouldn't let me touch the gas, the gas pedal. He told me that we should just creep in the Home Depot parking lot first. He yelled at me when I did a K-turn after he asked me to do a U-turn. I don't even know what a K-turn is. When I told him there wasn't enough room to do a U-turn, he said, don't try and do a U-turn in one swoop if the street is too narrow. Isn't a U-turn meant to be done in one swoop? Didn't you just ask me to do a U-turn in one swoop? When my mother asked me how was it, all I said was fine because I didn't want to instigate an argument. Do you see my point? <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, what do I do without getting anyone's feelings hurt? From Alyssa. Oh my gosh, that was a really funny email. Alyssa, uh, check this story out. This is true. My foster dad, who was the one that taught me to drive, he has narcolepsy, right, which is where you randomly fall asleep, and he's a driver's ed teacher. We'd be like driving down the road, right? He'd be like, take a left up there at the neck. <laughs> All right, let's be serious. I think that your dad is probably freaking out about the whole driving thing because he has some sort of negative situation attached to that or some sort of painful situation attached to that. So I think that would be like my first question to you is like, why is it that you think your dad is freaking out so much about your driving, right? Did he get in a really bad car accident when he was a teenager or recently? Did he have like a friend get in a really bad car accident? Uh, you know, and so maybe that's why he freaks out about it. I think behind most people's situations, there's often a story, and sometimes we don't know that story, so I think it's important to get to know that story so we know why the person is reacting a certain way. Or, this is just sort of a hunch here, maybe it's something like more subtle, right? Like more emotional, right? Like maybe, you know, because now you got your learner's permit, you're getting your driver's license, you're like growing up, and so he feels like he has less control over the things that happen to you. And so oftentimes when people feel like they're not in, in control, they like try to over control certain situations to get that feeling of control back. So what I'm saying is that your dad's probably like a really nice guy, really likes you, and he's probably just kind of sad because he feels like his little girl is growing up. Try to be compassionate and see things from his perspective. Ask him questions when things are calm. Why do you get so nervous about my driving? Just try to be compassionate. And you know, if all else fails, I'd probably ask your mom to teach you how to drive in the future. That way you can skip on the arguments. Because let's be honest, we all know there's nothing worse than a dad seat driver. <laughs> oh, I love puns. Let us, let us answer the next question. Hello, Josh. Hello. I decided to write hello instead of hey, which I expect starts almost all of your other emails. And there it is right there. My thought, my issue. Conformity scares me more than anything I know. And yet it is necessary to conform to be quote successful in today's world. But I don't always want to fit in with the crowd. I want to be intensely different. The person you always remember. But in doing that, I sometimes harm others or other things. So here's a question. What's your take on conformity or lack thereof? Thanks, 
your hopefully memorable friend, Patrick. If you want to be memorable, there's an easy solution. Just get a pet elephant. It worked for me. Don't judge. Okay, I mean, yeah, I guess I can tell you my view on conformity, but it sort of doesn't matter, right? Because like anything in life, it's not so much someone else's perspective on it, it's what, what is your perspective on it? Where do you stand with that particular topic? I would say conformity in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I would say unconformity in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's up to the particular situation, the particular scenario, whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, I, I do believe there are certain life laws, right? Like, don't be a jerk, surround yourself with good people, don't eat yellow snow, right? Like, you know, those are like solid life laws. But I think some things are not as black and white, and some things are up to negotiation and up to interpretation. And you personally need to decide where you stand on it. You don't need my opinion, you don't need someone else's opinion, you need to understand where you stand on it. Basic rule, test everything, right? If it's good, conform to it. If it's bad, don't conform to it. If it's questionable, try it out. Test it. You figure it out yourself. Here's a question though, and I want you to be really honest with yourself. Why is it that conformity scares you so much? You know, I think if you like honestly sit down and answer that question, that you'll learn a lot about yourself, you know? Why is it that you're afraid to conform? Right? I mean, I've, I've dealt with things like this, like I'm, I'm sort of like this too. I mean, is it that you think if you conform that you'll be ignored or forgotten about? Or that conformity equals like some sort of really boring life? Either way, man, I think this scenario is your call. But I would say, here is my piece of advice to you. I would say that because you typically don't like to conform, that you're certainly not going to be happy in like a typical nine to five job work scenario. So you're going to need to find something really different, really interesting, that really challenges you, that's creative, or maybe start your own thing, or maybe work for some really rad nonprofit. Like sometimes people see, you know, non-conformity and they see that as a bad thing, but I think you could use it as a good thing. People typically who don't conform, they look at the world and they see what's wrong, right? And that's okay because that can be a good thing because you can see, okay, this thing is wrong and as opposed to being part of the problem, you could be part of the solution. And you would have a pet elephant, which would be awesome. If you find yourself from time to time feeling like this guy, maybe you're stressed out, you're worried about something, you can write in to me for advice. Go to heyjosh.com or pick up the phone and call 877-HEY-JOSH and I shall sling you some glorious advice. Until then, I am Josh Ship in your face, but on your side.